So what is it? What cardiac cycle is? All the activities, all the events, and thank you for reminding. Where? Cardiac chambers. So then you have to know the name of the chambers. Oh, what are the name? Ah, okay, atria. Oh, yes, ventricles. How many chambers? How many? Atria two. How many ventricles? Two. And you have to tie in their respective location. This is not just getting the name. Where? Chambers of the heart. Which? What chambers? Where are those? Which ones are superior? Which ones are inferior? Tie the details. Details, details, details is the key. So you put the details in there. Well, next is when. These processes, these are basically different processes. When does this, when does this cardiac cycle occur? When does it happen? All the time. At all times, because our hearts never stop working at all times. <clears throat> then the last part is how. Well, not really last part. You could still add one more. This tablet is just getting a little finicky now. How? Where you describe the process. And again, use your own language as much as possible. Keep the terminologies intact. Atria are atria. Ventricles are ventricles. So details will be here, not just atria and ventricle. There are valves. Which valves are those? There are blood vessels. All of that will tie into pair. This is what anatomy and physiology is. You incorporate the anatomy so that you can understand the physiology. Then how do all of this together produce this cardiac cycle? That's the process. That is the physiology. Okay. And then, last but not the least, you want to write or you want to learn. Are there any deviation? Can there be problems? Yeah, we'll be talking about some problems like heart murmur. This is where the pathology comes in. So here we got the anatomy. Here you got the physiology. Here you got the pathology, pathophysiology. Each topic, if you learn it like that, because I'm teaching it like that. <clears throat> I teach each topic in parts so that it's divided as what is it? Where is it happening? When? It's not applicable always. When is not always applicable, but put it in there. What the heck? How? And are there deviation? Divide the topics like that. Then what I will encourage you to do, or rather I will strongly urge you to do, put your notes away. Take, you want to take your notes. You don't want to just have the uh, textbook. Don't make flashcard. With physiology, flashcard doesn't work. Flashcard is basically you are taking the language of the textbook uh, content, you are transferring into a piece of paper and you are trying to look at it all the time. That is also trying to memorize physiology, which will fail inevitably. You cannot memorize physiology. You just can't. It has to be understood, meaning you have to digest it. How do you understand this? Divide it. What? When? Where? How? Okay. Then put your notes away. Bring out the study guide. This is how you should use the study guide. I have listed it already how to use the study guide. Then the study guides are basically a set of questions that I formulated, which will force you to describe all aspects of the topics we are studying. So you will find multiple questions on every topic. Bring out the study guide and say, which questions are about cardiac cycle? Yeah, question, I'm just giving you a hypothetical number. Five, six, and eight, okay. Can I answer those? without taking the help of your notes, without looking at your resource material. Okay, so next is after you learn the topics, 
and you have to go through this couple of times. Then bring out the study guide. Answer the questions as if you are answering an exam. Answer the questions related pertaining to that topic. No notes. No book. It, this is what I mean by answering the questions as if you are answering an exam question. <clears throat> then check. Did I miss anything? After you are done answering, double check. What did I miss? First time around, you will definitely miss something. Oh, you know what? <coughs> I totally <coughs> missed the roll of the SL valves, or I completely missed the isovolumetric relaxation. Okay. If it seems like you missed more than 20%, of what you studied, what you thought you knew. I would say, go back, do the learning again. What, when, where? Take it further. The next one would be explain to someone. This is why study groups are so necessary. I have a study group forum in the discussion board, just for that purpose. Whoever wants to form study group, post there. Make study groups. Yes, we are online, but there is no reason why you can't collaborate and study. Basically, this is your peer group. Explain to another. And that another should be your peer. I have had students who said, I explained to my boyfriend, I explained to my girlfriend. They said, I did fantastic. My response is, what do you expect them to say? Is your spouse or your significant other or your kid or your parents, are they going to say, I didn't understand a thing of it, honey, but whatever, you, are, you did great. Now, how about dinner? You know, your peer, someone else who understands what you are talking about, not your family members, if your family members understand, that's different to another, your peer. Without notes, book, or any other media. If you can, at the end, if you can do this and this, you have understood. <clears throat> This is what we call a complete learning. After that, active recall. Let's say you have done this the second week of class. The exam is fourth week of the class. Before the exam, active recall. What you can do is active recall. And you can continue to do that. Let's say you are, you know, you are at work and you got a little bit of break and you're thinking, ah, what should I do? Oh, let me sit down. How much do I remember? Do I remember that cardiac cycle that I studied a week ago? What do I remember? Active recall is actively trying to extract the information from your brain. Try to Remember, wow, why this tablet is doing that? What you studied. If you follow through with this and the check and this, and you do the active recall, engage in that, there is no reason why you wouldn't do well in the, in the exam and in the class. I'm not teaching to test. In a way, I am. But basically, what I want to make sure, as your professor, as your educator, and as someone who knows what kind of challenges 
you will have to face wherever you happen to go from here, um, that, that you're fully prepared for it. I want to make sure that you are understanding. In the process of learning and understanding, you pick up a lot of skills that you may not be aware of. So the class will seem hard. And I will say, yeah, it is hard. It is definitely rigorous. Uh, would I push you to learn? Of course, I will push you to learn. Would I actually do what I'm saying I would do? Yes, you can bet. I will. Some of you already know that. Okay. I even sometimes, you know, when things are lighter, I usually say, okay, you know, don't take me as a working dog. This dog will bite and bite hard. Because my role as your educator to make sure that you are going out of this class, exiting the class, fully prepared to take this skill, take the information, take the content, take the knowledge and apply it to the next level. These are part of nursing credit courses. Okay, So basically these are considered the nursing credit. So these courses are taught at the level of a nursing program because they are nursing credit courses. Okay. And if you feel like, well, I'm not going to go into nursing, all other allied health fields are pretty much similarly rigorous. Cardiovascular technology, respiratory therapy, those are all pretty challenging programs. Okay, So this is how you should be studying. And I hope you took notes of what we just did. Okay, any question I can answer? What time is it? 10.25, we got 20 minutes. I'll go through the introduction of the heart. All right, so again, I'm here for help. I'm here for you. <clears throat> I'm here to you know, offer whatever in my capacity, I will always offer the help. Feel free to ask me whatever you are confused about, whatever questions you might have. Don't hold back, ask. <clears throat> Uh, I want to bring up this cardiac physiology. Okay. So then uh, let me start a new share. So the class schedule, if you looked at the class schedule, the class schedule basically says that the first two lectures and the third day is the lab. For the lab, the cardiac anatomy is going to be discussed in <clears throat> details. Okay, so right now for first class, I just barely introduce the heart functions. Next class, Wednesday, we are going to go, you know, we're going to dive in, so to speak. So here, cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular, that's our first lecture exam. Cardiovascular system. Cardio and vascular. Divide these two terms. Which um, chapters we are learning? What? Cardio meaning heart, vascular meaning blood vessels. So we are learning circulatory system and, of course, cardiac physiology. So our first few classes, three or four classes, I'm forgetting uh, how many are cardio um, heart, basically about cardiac physiology. So we are learning these topics, heart anatomy, which is mostly for the Thursday lab, then conduction system, which will Wednesday will study that cardiac cycle, cardiac output, control of heart function. So going over, why isn't this? Some of this is just freezing up. Okay. Maybe I'll just use the page down. <clears throat> okay. So heart and blood vessels are two units of the cardiovascular system. First of all, let's, let's just, let me ask you, what do you think the function of the cardiovascular system will be? What does it do? And the chat won't come up um, when I'm doing screen share. So if there are questions in the chat, uh, one of you can read and, and relay to me, please. I'll be appreciative. What is the function of cardiovascular system? What do you think it does? Pump blood. Sorry. Pump blood, blood and oxygen to the body. 
oxygen okay oxygen supply that's one thing what else you think distributes nutrients nutrient supply yes of course basically supply of anything and everything what else does travel through blood waste waste products yes waste products what else how about hormones regulatory molecules heat we maintain a certain temperature right in our bodies who's producing that heat what did we learn in 144 which tissue in our body is produce most of the muscle. heat which muscle there are three types of muscles Skeletal. which one is skeletal good okay and that heat is to be distributed via blood so heart's function is basically think of it i compare it with our our city's water supply system we all need water we have a water supply system in our city we got a pump house we got extensive lines you know to city of el cajon city of san diego city of pawe blah 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 and each city gets another pipe to its block from your block to one pipe to your house and from that single pipe into your house for fresh water you got branches one for your kitchen one for your bathroom one for your laundry and then similarly we use that fresh water you open your kitchen sink do dishes with the fresh water that water is now dirty water that dirty water has to be collected from the sink from the laundry from the shower and they are going to be exiting your house as one sewage line waste water line all of the houses in your neighborhood are going to dump their waste water into eventually a single line eventually from blocks from cities the whole county of san diego will get large waste water supply and they all already have their fresh water supply line in order to supply fresh water and make sure that everybody when they open their faucets they are getting you know substantial water what is it that has to be maintained by the pump house in our city what do you say what? that not much water today because my water what filtration mm, something else sure. reservoir mm. if you open your faucet pressure, what pressure? exactly water pressure so similarly if we are going to be supplying blood to every single cell eventually every single cell is like a single house it needs its oxygen it needs it nutrients needs it fresh water every cell produces waste products carbon dioxide other waste products it has to be collected and eventually since we have no way of dumping our waste water our blood that has to be recycled recharged and reused because it's a closed system heart's function is just this pressure the reason why this is what i mean by you know what when why <clears throat> the reason why the heart is beating all the time like that and no it doesn't beat when you are just when you are in love it beats regardless love or not i'm sorry i'll be bursting some bubbles in in a in a in a dark humor way so basically um heart is beating why is it beating is contracting to create pressure is expanding to fill up heart has chambers those chambers are filling up with the blood contracting creating pressure so that that blood can be ejected into blood vessel and create a certain pressure which will carry the blood all throughout throughout your body into your organs into your cells out of your organs back to the heart to the lungs recharge and back heart's function is just that create pressure this is why the heart is beating this is why we say the heart is pumping pumping is creating pressure what's the role of the blood vessel transport they are like the lines carry the blood throughout the body and they do a little more than that we'll talk about that 
later on. So we'll be addressing the very first question of the study guide before we end the class today. So since it's a closed system, we are using the, the cells are taking oxygen nutrient away and dumping their waste products into the blood. The blood has to go through a recharging system. It has to be recharged. And which organs are taking care of that recharging the blood? The lungs. So since we are dealing with oxygenated blood, like fresh water, waste water, one line for fresh water, one line for waste water, one system to deal with fresh water supply, another system to deal with waste water supply. In our body, heart is doing both. It's dealing with fresh blood, which is oxygenated blood. I usually just write it as O2 blood and deoxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood is the blue. Typically, that's what it's drawn as. Oxygenated blood is the red. That's what it's drawn as. So heart is dealing with both. There are two separate channels of circulation. Just like we've got two separate lines for water, in our bodies we are doing both. The heart is dealing with both. As you can see, there are two channels of circulation. The two channels, one is between the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. Actually, let me just do this. Here is the catch. The blood that's leaving the heart to go to the lungs, the stream to go to the lungs, and the blood that's returning to the heart, they are not returning to the same place. So to be more accurate, the right side of the heart is the one that's sending blood to the lungs. The lungs reoxygenate, recharge, simply speaking, basically adds the oxygen. And the blood that returns to the heart from the lungs is returning to the left side. <clears throat> this is one channel from the heart to the lungs and back. We'll call this pulmonary. Some call it channel, some call it circuit, pulmonary channel. Just for recharging the blood, that's what it's for. It's almost like imagine if we had to recycle all the water, 100% and we'll probably have to do that at some point because Earth's resources are limited and water is drying up fast to many people, then that's what we'll do. Our wastewater will go to maybe a lake or someplace, some reservoirs, where it would be refiltered and, and made into usable water again, and it will return to our homes. Imagine that's exactly what the heart is doing. What is the other channel then? the channel that supplies that oxygenated blood. So from the heart to the rest of the body, meaning everywhere, and back. And same rule applies. The blood that's leaving the heart to go to the rest of the body is like fresh water. It's leaving the left side of the heart. Then when we say rest of the body, basically that blood enters your organs, passes through next to the cells. The cells dump their waste products, take away the oxygen, take away the nutrients, just like you getting the fresh water, doing dishes and converting the fresh water to waste water. The cells take oxygen, take nutrient, dump carbon dioxide, waste product, so the blood that enters an organ and the blood that exits an organ are not the same. Just like the water that enters your house is fresh, the water that leaves your house is dirty. The blood that enters your organ is oxygenated. The blood that leaves the organ is deoxygenated. So from the rest of the body, the blood that's returning from the rest of the body back into the heart 
is returning into the right side. So a question that I have, the very first question of the study guide that said, describe the blood flow from the right atrium to right atrium. We'll deal with that in a second. Any question about this? This is pretty basic. The first day I'm going to go very light. Is there a name for the circuit on the left? Like the yes, other there is. Primary? This is known as systemic channel or systemic circuit. So pulmonary systemic. Thank you. When we study, as later on you will see, we pretty much rely heavily on systemic circuit. <clears throat> Let's just take a quick look at the heart. The detailed anatomy, we're not covering it just enough so that we understand what's going on from this class and next class onward. So the heart consists of four chambers. The two superior chambers are atria, atrium individually. And I would also urge you to remember uh, to look at the spelling policies, just like 144. Atrium is the single, atria is the plural. Two inferior chambers, ventricles. So if you are to draw the heart like this, schematic, these two are the atria, these two are the ventricles. Not only that, be more specific. Refer to this as the right atrium. Refer to this as the left atrium. Mirror imaging, keep that in mind. Not your left, your right. The heart's left, the heart's right. Right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. Always separate the heart into two sides, a right and the left. And that's how it is. There is a partition, as we learn in 144 septum. There is a septum that separates the right side of the heart from the left side of the heart. It runs through between the atria and the ventricles. There will be different names, but you learn that for the lab. Something else. There are also valves. Because we are dealing with the moving fluid, blood. There are valves. <clears throat> valves have pretty much one function. So you got the chambers, atria and ventricle, septum, which have different name. So I'm going to draw the heart here again, right there, there. Where are the valves? Okay, first thing first, do you think there are blood vessels coming in or going out, entering and exiting the heart? That's a pretty silly question. But do you think there will be blood vessels? Yes. Of course. Because we just talked about the blood returns from heart to lungs and back, from heart to the rest of the body and back. We just talked about all of those. That means there must be vessels that are entering and exiting from the heart. So basically, there are vessels that are entering and exiting from the heart. Those that are entering, they're entering at the atria. That's the flow of the blood. Vessels into atria, separate ones for set of vessels for right atrium, separate vessels for left atria. And then there are vessels. I'm just going to draw this as schematic. In reality, the vessel's position is slightly different. There are vessels that are exiting the ventricles. The blood flow is always one way, which is from vessel into the atrium, into the ventricle, out through the vessel. Same with the left. From vessels into the atrium, into the ventricles, out through the vessel. So where do we find the valves? Here, between atria and ventricles. And here between ventricles and the vessels that are connected to those. <clears throat> a 
And instead of memorizing, oftentimes the names are telling you what these valves are. These two valves, let me actually just put different colors. These two purple valves, what I drew in purple, these two between the atria and ventricles. Guess what do we call them? Atrioventricular valves. There are other names you will learn that for Thursday. Atrioventricular between atria and ventricles. And how about these yellow valves? What do we call them? What might we call them? These are not called ventriculovascular valve, but they are named based on their shape. Sorry about that. I'm getting notification about meetings. So basically, these yellow valves, the valves between the ventricles and the vessels, they are named based on their shape. They are called SL valves, semilunar, because their casps look half moon shape. There are other structures here. Let's not worry about that. Let's just go over this in and out. Let's just go over that. So blood flow through the heart. I'm just going to draw schematics. Oh, well. Kind of hard to make it uniform with the tablet here. So schematics meaning I'm just going to draw a square and I'm going to separate that square into a superior and an inferior part. So these two are the atria, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. There are two vessels that are carrying blood from the body into the right atrium. There is one vessel that's carrying the blood away from the right ventricle. There are two sets of vessel, overall four, that are bringing blood from the lungs. So this is from the lungs. This is, well, we'll answer that. And there is one set of one large vessel that's carrying the blood away from the left ventricle. <clears throat> okay. The names, you will learn them, but I'm just going to go over those. The two vessels that are bringing the blood back into right atria from the entire body, those are called superior vena cava, Superior because it's entering superiorly and inferior vena cava. Now, what kind of blood is this? Oxygenated or deoxygenated? Deoxygenated. Deoxygenated because it's coming from the rest of the body. It's wastewater. This deoxygenated blood passes through which valve, the generic name? The atrioventricular valve. And atrioventricular valve on the right side. With this as a name, but don't worry, you will learn that. Then exits via a vessel. The vessel is pulmonary trunk. So where is it going? the oxygenated blood from the atria to ventricles. And what kind of valve will this pass on through here between the ventricle and the vessel? Semilunar valve. Semilunar valve, yes. This also has a name, specific name for the right. We'll learn that. And where is this blood going, you think? It's deoxygenated blood. Where is it going to go? To the lungs. To the lungs, as we learn, lungs are the organs that will recharge that blood. So to the lungs. 
same blood after being recharged, reoxygenated, is basically returning back into the left atrium as oxygenated blood. Just like wastewater became fresh water. From the left atrium through another AV valve. So that's what these valves are between atria and ventricles, AV valves. Specific name, you'll learn that later. Into the left ventricle, then passes through another SL valve into this vessel known as ascending. Don't just call it aorta, call it ascending aorta. Because aorta is a large vessel. Sometimes it ascends, then it curves, then it descends. Accordingly, it's called ascending aorta, arch of aorta, descending aorta, ascending aorta. Where is this going to go now? It's oxygenated. So everywhere? Everywhere to the entire body. And the cells are going to, again, get a little share of their oxygen, nutrients, do dishes, take shower, so to speak, turn the blood into the oxygenated blood which is going to return again via this to vena cavi into right atrium, into right ventricle. And this whole cycle will keep going on. This is why the heart never stops because the need for oxygen never stops. If the heart stops, what do you think the first thing that would happen? From what we learned so far, I know I'm going over time five minutes ago. What do you think will happen? If the heart stops, yeah. yeah. Massive oxygen deprivation. We'll talk about this, but it's known as hypoxia. We'll talk extensively about hypoxia. Massive oxygen deprivation, which is going to kill all the cells, meaning all organs are going to be dead. This is why heart is a critical organ, the most critical organ, because survival of every other organ depends on the heart, its function. Okay. So that would be today's lecture. It's really light. Next class onward, you will see that the physiology lectures are going to get a little more intense. Any question that I can answer? Uh, just, a, just a quick one, just to refresh my memory, the right side where the deoxygenated mm -hmm. blood, that would be the pulmonary circuit. And then the left side would be the systemic circuit. Exactly, okay. exactly. Thank you. Pretty much the circuit is, is between the ventricle and the organ that's receiving the blood from the ventricle. So right ventricle, two lungs, and back is pulmonary circuit. Okay. The blood is returning to atria, not a ventricle. So that is this is pulmonary circuit to the lungs and back. Systemic circuit is from the left ventricle to everywhere, everywhere. entire body and back to the right atrium. Systemic circuit. All vessels that fall in this route are systemic vessel. All vessels that fall within this route are pulmonary vessels, arteries, veins, etc. Any question, any other question I can answer? Okay, so let me ask you this. Since we had several videos on, are you comfortable with me uploading this on YouTube? I'll probably upload as unlisted and just give you the link. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. I know that several people have subscribed. Um, subscription, basically, if uh, if you guys have subscribed and you want to know that the, the video is up, then I have to make the videos public. Okay. Um, as soon as the semester ends, I'm going to take all those videos off and make them private and delete some of them. But while the semester goes, my option is either videos are public and, and you guys subscribe and you know. The other option is I make them unlisted and I have to individually link, upload the videos and produce the link in the canvas, which I can, it will take a little longer. So if there are no concerns about the videos, and nobody's watching other than our classes. The playlists are different. Uh, if you have concern, let me know. If I don't hear from students that, that yeah, I'm concerned about this, I would assume that 
there are no concerns and I'll upload those videos. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind either way. Okay, okay, alrighty. Okay, alrighty. So thank you for some of you are making, uh, you know, uh, taking the initiative and, and, and forming study group and, and creating different links. I really appreciate that. Join us study group before you can spell study group. There are really, these are excellent ways, especially we are cut off from people. This gives you a, a little bit of your support group. And I know some of the minutes of the study sessions going to whining about the class and complaining, uh, you know, about the professor. And uh, I'm perfectly fine with that. As long as it reduces your stress and you don't spend too much time complaining, but more time goes into studying, <laughs> maybe five minutes you complain. Did you look at that exam? That was so hard. What did she think? What was she thinking? I did in my time. You are going to do that. That's, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. You don't have to like me, but you do have to do what I'm asking you to do for your own good. So make a study group as soon as you can. And make a calendar, make a schedule and plug in some study time. <clears throat> and um, Pomodoro technique, I'll talk about it later, especially as we go later into the semester. There's a technique known as Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique basically based on studies that says that if you're sitting there for a good chunk of time, just trying to learn things, then again, the, the last half of that time is, is wasted because you are not learning anything. You have to break it up. So for study sessions, I know that many of you have job, family, et cetera, to balance. So if two hours on Wednesdays and two hours on Fridays, I'm just giving you random time, is when you all can meet, I would say go for a 45, 50 minutes, give it a five minute break, stretch, just walk around where you live, come in contact with outside air, come back in five minutes, start again, you'll notice that your learning is much better that way. As opposed to, we got these two hours, let's just sit through and do it all. No, one hour is going to be wasted. Okay. Thank you guys. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Have, a, have a nice day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.